Right, so in this video we're going to look at uh, some special types of matrices. These are important for the next topic that's coming up, which is an alternate decomposition method called Kalaski decomposition. And in addition to that, uh, a very important uh, special type of matrix called a um, uh, property of matrices, which is uh, positive definiteness, which we will look at too. So first thing we'll look at is diagonal dominance. Uh, a diagonally dominant matrix A is one that where the diagonal entries, in fact, are larger than or equal to, greater than or equal to the sum of the absolute values of all the other entries in that row. So example-wise, best thing to look as an example, say if we look at this case, this is not di diagonally dominant because if we add 2 and 3, 2 and 3 is adds to 5 and that's clearly bigger than this. So this is not diagonally dominant. Let's change this to something diagonally dominant then, at least the first row. Now this has become diagonally dominant, uh, at least the first row. Uh, we move to the second row, for instance, and we have 0, 1, 0. This is a diagonally dominant row as well. And the last one, for instance, would be, say, minus 1, uh, 6, and 8. So this uh, row is um, also fine. Uh, basically, you'll take the absolute value of this. Absolute value of this, 6 and 1 is 7. So this is bigger than 7, therefore, also diagonally dominant. So therefore, um, but the matrix only becomes diagonally dominant if all the diagonal entries, this entire diagonal, if it's this 3 by 3 matrix, every entry here must be larger than the remaining entries uh, the sum, not only the remaining entries, but the sum of the remaining entries. So this plus this and this plus this should be bigger, should be uh, less than or equal to this. Okay, so this must be bigger than or equal to the sum of these two values, the absolute value of these. Uh, sorry, the sum of the absolute values here. And that is the, the same idea, only AII is greater than strictly all the remaining entries in each of the, the absolute, the sum of the absolute values of each um, of the rows. Okay, so if you were to sum them up, it would be bigger. That's called strict diagonally, that's a strictly diagonally dominant matrix. So we say the matrix is strictly diagonally dominant. So uh, that's the concept. So it's, uh, here it is. So it's, it's a strictly diagonally dominant matrix if this uh, holds here. So the matrix you see here, this is a strictly diagonally dominant matrix because uh, 2 and 3, 5, which is less than 6, uh, 0 plus 0 is less than 1, uh, 1 and 6 is 7, also less than 8. So this is a strict di strictly diagonally dominant matrix A. So those are the two uh, straightforward ones, um, uh, diagonal dominance. We'll move on to now positive definite matrices. So a positive definite matrix is uh, a symmetric matrix if A is symmetric and it satisfies this relationship. XTAX, the quadratic, is greater than zero for all uh, possible vectors X that are non-zero, um, sorry, this should be vector, that are non-zero vectors, then we say that A is a positive definite matrix. Now, uh, some authors will not will relax the property of uh, symmetry and they may say that it may not be symmetric and still work out here of course for the purpose of this video and um, we will assume that a is symmetric in fact and we can say it's symmetric positive definite uh, to be uh, more precise so we'll say a is but of course uh, symmetry is included in this definition of uh, positive definiteness now there is another uh, definition a lighter version, a slightly relaxed version of this particular, uh, what's it called, uh, inequality, okay, and that is uh, basically um, just we change um, this here, we change this here to xtax greater than or equal to zero, and then we say the matrix is positive semi-definite. Uh, positive semi-definite and that would work as well if a matrix is positive semi-definite um, some of the properties of positive definite matrices are also included when the matrix is positive semi-definite. So that basically is how we um, 
Uh, these, are, these are two ideas. Now what I'm going to do is an example. So we'll continue with that. So here's a matrix A. First thing we are checking is, uh, let's check, is it symmetric? Well, yes, it seems to be. There we go. Those are the same. Those two are the same. And those two are the same. So the transpose of A is clearly equal to A. That's the de de definition of uh, being a symmetric matrix. Matrix A is symmetric if it's transpose is the same as the matrix itself. Now, let's set this up. So basically, we're talking about uh, this situation. So we're talking about this situation. We have to multiply these through. And as we do that, uh, we'll end up with first, if I multiply the uh, second two uh, matrices, uh, so th uh, this one and this one, I'm going to get, um, so this will be just x1, x2, x3 into, so I'll get that. And then when I multiply these two together, no, I'll do it here actually. So when I multiply these two together, I'm going to end up with, I end up with this. Now, I have to uh, go back to basic algebra and I'm going to basically what I'm going to try to do is complete the squares wherever it's possible. So if I do that, I end up with this and that is clearly greater than zero. Um, unless of course x1, x2 and x3 are in fact equal to zero. But I'm only interested in it being greater or equal to zero and that is actually the case. So this matrix A is in fact uh, a positive definite matrix. Okay, it's a positive definite matrix. So, not necessarily very easy to compute actually. Okay, checking some uh, matrix is a positive definite matrix is not easy, as you can see here. And this is only a three by three matrix. Now, of course, larger matrices checking for positive definiteness is not easy. Later on, we will discover there are some better ways of estimating if a matrix is positive definite. We'll look at that later. So, what positive? Why is it so cool to be a positive definite matrix? Well, uh, positive definite matrices. Um, uh, a positive definite matrix A, all right, has the following properties. Number one, A is non-singular, guaranteed non-singular. Okay, so its inverse exists. Number two, um, very nice property is the diagonal elements are all greater than zero okay uh, so for all the values all the so i equals one two up to n all greater than zero that's it okay those are two interesting properties uh there are other uh, other possible uh interesting results that you uh, interesting properties that uh, positive definite matrices have uh, but we will leave it at this uh for the time being thank you